All right, welcome everybody. So we just finished our Gothic 1 playthrough, a thing that was on my to-do list for this channel, and I can finally cross it off. I had a blast going through the Valley of Mines once again, and I hope you guys liked it as well. So this video is very short and very simple. It's just a little bit of speculation, nothing substantial, but here, here it is. So the last two episodes, when we were deep inside the Temple of the Sleeper, I was talking a little bit about the architecture and all that stuff. And there was one thing that I wanted to show you guys. So because I was playing with a texture mod made by Artemiano, an overall very nice texture pack, very nice to look at, very smooth. The original textures kind of went missing. I don't really know why that is. Maybe they were too low res for the project or he couldn't, you know, upscale them. I don't know. Either way, we are going to take a look at them and just speculate a little bit about them. And without any further ado, let's take a look at them. First, we are going to take a look at this texture. And to me, it is very clear that this mural is depicting the sleeper himself. If we take a look at the left side of the texture, you've got all the limbs and you can kind of see the mask, but the right side is a little different and there's possibly two explanations for it. The first explanation could be that this texture was made before the sleeper's appearance got finalized. They had multiple drafts for the Archdemon some of them you can find online, and this might be a remnant from these times. The second theory is that this mural actually shows the exact moment the sleeper enters the Morgrad, the world of Gothic. We know that there is a big portal behind the sleeper in his arena. We can even see this portal in the cinematics of Gothic 1 and 2, and we also see that once he is defeated, he is sucked back into this portal, into his original realm. So this depiction might show him just crawling out of this dimension and the remnants of the portal is swirling around him. And this might explain this weird silhouette that we can actually see in this texture. So the next piece of art I want to show you is part of a trilogy, so to speak. And they are hidden up there on the walls in the shadows and you usually can't see them but if we take a closer look at these we can find some interesting things in there so this first one it took me a while to decipher what's going on there but we can clearly see a humanoid figure in the bottom right wielding a shield and a spear or something like that and up there is a creature that looks very much like a dragon. You can see it spewing fire from its mouth and you can see the wings. You can kind of see a tail maybe, but it is funny to see that because the dragons eventually became part of the Gothic saga, but at that point in time, during the development of Gothic 1, they had different plans for the series. We just need to take a look at the gothic sequel which was planned, which went more into the direction of having demons as a menace to the Valley of Mines. But here we can clearly see one of these scaly beasts fighting this humanoid figure. The second one shows a humanoid sitting on some kind of throne, which is very detailed, rich in ornaments, and runes are etched into the sides of it. The garments or robe of said figure look very regal and elegant. The first mural showed us a figure only dressed in a loincloth. The last part of the trilogy evokes a very uneasy feeling in my opinion. It is too vague to make some assumption, too unclear, too shrouded to actually see what it is but it gives me the feeling that this mural is depicting a very dark presence. Now that I think of it, this could very well be one of the first depictions of the Dark Lord. 
or something else. So how could we conclude all of this? Are these murals showing us a glimpse into the future? A heroic figure slaying the beast and then, because of just that, sitting on a throne, ruling over a kingdom? Or is it a look back into the history of the orcs? Maybe they also overcame a great evil, only to be plagued by a much darker presence after that. Maybe they struck a deal, bargained for a victory, just like in the stories that Xardas told us, and Orshak. In the end, we don't know, but in my opinion, these murals seem to be way too deliberate to just think of them as something very unimportant. And here we are at the end of our little excursion. So what do you guys think of it? Is it just some plain old texture? Or is it depicting some kind of prophecy or history? Please let me know down in the comments. I wish you a very good one. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one.